Hey guys, it's Corey here with Benham Outdoors, and I've got my design partner Nico here with me. Last video that was shot of the uh, How It's Made series was talking about the design intent of the 221 flutter spoon. We talked a little bit about draft angle and about the molding of the parts of manufacturing. Not only when you design a product are you designing it for the looks that you want it with and all that, but also you need to make sure that it is truly able to be manufactured. So we're gonna be talking about our tool designs and what goes into that tool design from the design intent of the product to the design intent of that tool so we get a final part that looks and acts like we want it to look and act. All right, so when we're getting into that design of the tool, we have to think about the machine that's actually gonna run that part. We can't choose a giant machine for a very small part. So for, for our spoon parts, let's say, we have a very small press with a very small screw and barrel. So the residence time of the plastic being in that heated zone is very short to try and get that plastic through without burning. We also have daylight, daylight of the press opening. So will my tool fit? When it is open, will it be able to eject the parts without colliding with the non-moving side, we'll call it, which is the A side. So there's a lot of different things that are, that are in that that you have to be aware of before you start that tool design and keep that in mind. So when we start out the design guys, what we have is we have the four cavity tool here. So we want to find our orientation of the tool. So we have enough steel in between each cavity so that the tool is safe and it's going to have longevity without blowing out the walls. Also you notice here, these different colors of pins that are coming out. Those are the ejector pins that when the tool opens, I'll show you that here. So the tool will come together, mold the part, then when it opens back up, these parts have to come across with that moving B side, then get ejected off. If they get stuck in this A side, that can cause a collision and could be catastrophic to these more intricate tools like this. So we want to be sure that the parts come across like that. And I'll show you a little bit of a side image of that ejection system so you see the different uh, holes that the ejectors are going through and then a very tight reamed hole at the at the end here or EDM wire burned So we don't get plastic flowing into that that hole essentially Between that hole and that pin now being that we do have two different sides of the ASIM blades These cavity and core plates on the A side and the B side change out so we can change the size of the blade but it's basically the same exact tool doing the work. So we're trying to build the tools efficient so they do a lot of work for us. And then uh, once again with the disassembly and the reassembly, we have bolts in here that assist us to hold these springs in place so I can remove my ejector pins, re-lube those, clean my tool, put it back together, but my springs never come apart. All right, so when the tool closes, basically what we have going on is the press is closing this tool and now these leader pins are going to engage these bushings and hold that much more accurate so the cavities line up much better. There are other ways that you can even enhance that farther if there is a need. Uh, once again, too, guys, the, the tool needs to be remaining at a constant temp while it's molding parts. So with that being said, if you notice, we have these water lines that come in and essentially surround that working area, if you will. And we have the same thing over here. That keeps our environment very repeatable so the product is being made in a repeatable environment. The press is very well controlled, now the temp of the tool is very well controlled. So once that tool starts spitting out eh, even hundreds of parts, it gets to a normalized state where it's, it's basically where it needs to be now. Now if the tool is running reliably, you can pretty much trust once in a while, you'll have a little fluke take place, but you can usually trust that the tool is going to do what it should be doing once it's normalized and the water temp is correct on your tool. 
All right, so talking about draft angle, this is a draft angle. This is a draft angle, so it's all the way around this favorite cup of mine. So the plastic is being injected on this back side from this side of the tool, the non-moving A side. So when that tool opens, it's going to pull this part across with it, and then it's going to push that part off and the part falls essentially or gets grabbed by an operator or whatever it is. But that draft angle, as soon as it starts coming off, it separates the part from the actual steel that is molding or giving this part its shape. So draft angle in a lot of cases is a must. Once again though, we did talk about the shrink of plastic. So if you have an internal feature where that plastic is shrinking away from the steel, that doesn't always need draft. So there are different features in different areas that need draft and some that do not. So you need to be on top of your game once again in that part design to make sure you have draft where you're gonna need it and get rid of the draft if you don't want it or if it's not desired. One thing I wanna mention is sink. So if you notice, pretty much every plastic part that you see, for the most part, is gonna be thin cross sections, thin walls, and that kind of thing. We have these cored out areas around our cradle. And the reason for that is when the plastic goes into the tool and it expands and fills that cavity, it's warm material, actually very hot material at that point. So as it cools, it shrinks. And that can create wavy features, very bad looking sink, it's called. And you'll see that where you have a T profile come together where there will be sink on that top edge because it's sinking into that rib. So look at different plastic parts. It's very neat to see the way that they're made and the reason that they're made the way that they are. So the cradle that I'm holding in my hand this part has a hole that goes up into that end for it to go onto the rod holder and be more or less press fit on there. So what has to happen with this is we open and close the tool from this side and then we have a slide that's coming up in there to make that hole or that feature up in there. And then while that tool is opening, that pin is basically retracting so the part can now be ejected off and fall into the parts bin. So there's many different ways that the parts are made. Some parts have multiple slides, some have none. It's just an open and closed tool. So a lot of neat things once again going on with some parts. So when it comes to material selections, what kind of steels am I gonna choose for the, the tool itself? There are tons of different steel types out there. So you have to choose the steel that is gonna work well with the material that you're using. Some materials have additives in there that are more abrasive. So it's gonna chew that steel up much faster. Also, how machinable is that steel? The harder the steel or the metal gets, the more difficult it is to machine. With high performance cutters, such as these guys that are standing up back here, and high spindle speeds and all these advanced you know systems that are out there today it does make those hard machine or uh, hard metals more machinable but you do have to keep all those things in mind as well flows of the plastics abrasive nature of the plastic temperatures how are you going to control those temps so once again there's a lot of data that you're trying to keep in mind with that tool design All right, so now you got a pretty good run on about our tool design and what actually goes into the tool design itself. Behind me right here, we've got the core plate for the ASIM one and a half inch blade with the tool pads that were required to get that part machined. So in the next video, we're gonna be talking about master cam with the tool pads required to get the part machined up. We'll do some actual machining on the CNC, show some chips being thrown around we really hope that you enjoy these videos, guys. We appreciate your business very much. Good luck out there on the water.